Here we are with another Autogen update with 0.2.11. I'll briefly go over some of the smaller updates and then I'll get into the code and explanation of Autogen Studio UI update and something called multiple chats. Like I said, simple updates first. So we have allow timeout for code execution in Windows. There's an overall improvement in documentation, including the function calls where they use decorators and they've updated the previous versions to show that. They removed useless code in group chat, which is basically saying they've had code cleanup. They simplified the handling of the termination message. And finally, they have a notebook section in their website now, which this is the code from the notebooks folder or directory in their GitHub page, where you can find other simple projects. They started to port it over to their website so it's easier to see. Now we can move on to a bigger one with Autogen Studio UI. The first thing we need to do is upgrade it. So you can type pip install, either just type in Autogen Studio if this is the first time that you're installing it, or you'll say dash dash upgrade Autogen Studio. After that's done in the terminal, type in Autogen Studio space UI space dash dash port, then give it 8080 or whichever port you want. And then we'll open up the URL from the terminal. And the first update that I want to show you is now you see these workflows when you go to the build section and then you go to workflows, you can actually download these into a JSON file. This is an example one, whenever you load it up, there's a now a download button here. So let's download it, right? This is going to download as a JSON file. As you can see, travel agent group chat workflow.json. And this is going to be all of the properties from this workflow. What we can do now is take that JSON file. As you see here, I just put it into a new project I created. I now have imported Autogen Studio, the workflow config and the workflow manager. We can open up this JSON file. Okay, we can take this JSON file, add it into a workflow configuration object, and then basically say agent workflow.run some some message that we would say in the UI. So whenever I start the workflow in the UI and I type in what places would you go to visit in Paris and I press enter to initiate the chat, that's the same thing as putting the task here and starting the agent workflow dot run function. Now they also have a full fledged code editor within the skills or wherever you create the functions. So if you go to the build section, then go to the skills tab, let's click on the generate images, which is one they already have an example of you can see they have a full code editor here, which is a lot nicer to work with. They now have a way to test your model's connection. What does that mean? Well, if you go to the models tab in the build, let's click on the GPT-4 preview. Now let's, let me just put in some random API key here, right? This is definitely incorrect. Now there's a test model button. If I click that, it's going to say there's an invalid API key. Now if I put in a valid key, so let me just copy this in and then hit test model, this is going to say the model tested successfully with the parameter or the property open AI API key. I gave it a valid one. This is just a nice way to make sure that the model you're testing is going to work. And finally, they added a speaker workflow dropdown uh, in the group chat. So if you go over to the workflows, let's click on the travel agent again. Now, if we go to group chat manager, then you can see there's a speaker selection method. There's auto round robin and random. Okay. I think it before it was just like auto and last or something, but now they added round robin and random like we can do in our terminal IDE. These were some nice updates to Autogen Studio UI. However, what I noticed was even whenever I put the API keys in the models for the workflow, it still does. It still says I have a missing API key. So you still have to export the open AI API key in your terminal whenever you're running Autogen Studio UI. But other than that, they're really starting to upgrade this thing and add in all the features that you can do through code which is nice. I like that. Now there is a new way to interact with the agents called multi-agent chats. The way we almost always initiated chat was we would say user proxy dot initiate chat. And then whoever we wanted to initiate the chat with, whether it was a group chat or just one agent called an assistant, and then you would give it the message of what you'd want to do. And now there's an initiate chats. Let's go over the code. So I have two arrays here, one called financial task and another called writing task. The financial task is an array. There are two messages here, this one, and then the second one where investigate possible reasons of the stock performance. So what we want to do is find the current stock prices of Nvidia and Tesla and their performance over the past month in terms of percentage and then investigate possible reasons of their performance, whatever it is. And then I have a writing task is just one in this array to develop a blog based on the information that was provided. Okay. That's all it says right now. That might not make much sense, but let's keep going. There are three assistant agents, a, fin a financial assistant, a research assistant, and then a writer. Okay. Nothing crazy here. These, this is normal. And then we have a user agent with a code execution. We have a working directory for task, uh, use Docker false. Um, and then we come down to the initiate chats. So what's happening here? 
Well, we say initiate chats, and this is an array, right? And then each array is an object of properties, basically. So the first recipient is going to be the financial assistant, okay? The message is going to be from the financial task array up top, it's going to be the first message. So up here, the first message was what are the current stock prices of NVIDIA and Tesla? Okay, that's the first message. We have that new clear history that I talked about last week's update to true. Silent is a new property. This just means that it's not going to uh, show the output. So if this was true, it wouldn't show the output, but it's false. And by default, it's false. It's just here to show you that it exists. So it's we're going to see the output. And then now for the probably the more important new property with this is called the summary method. And there's two choices. The first one is the reflection with LLM which causes the LLM call to reflect back on chat history and then summarize the takeaway and then give that as a response. And then there's also last message, which is just going to take the last message from the chat and then give that as a response. And there's a new property here called carry over. And what it's saying is I want to include a figure or table of data in the blog post. Okay. So what this carry over property is saying is, all of the previous here, the previous two, the previous two response messages, carry them over here and then include them as part of my response whenever I'm done with this LLM call to the writer. And it's used as additional context for um, for this call. One thing I've noticed is each each of these calls, it's not like these are considered one API call. These are three separate API calls. So each of these are going to cost their own uh, number of cents. Now that I ran it, we can see the first one, it says start a new chat with the following message. The, this is the first financial task uh, item in the array where it asks, what are the current stock prices of NVIDIA and Tesla? It says with the following with the following carry over, there is no carry over. We didn't specify it and there wouldn't be any ways with the first, um, with the first uh, call. So then it's saying user to the financial assistant, what are the current stock prices? Um, it executes it, the user then executes, executes it and gets an output. Okay. Then it says terminate. Okay. So now we're done with that first call. Now we move on to the second one. So this is, this was the second financial task, um, uh, item in that array. So it investigate possible reasons of the stock performance. And it has the following carry over the current stock price of Nvidia is the same price that we had up here, 696.41. And it's showing a 31% increase over the past month. Okay. So it's, it's automatically carrying over the met the response from the previous. Now we're to the last chat message, right? Of the initiate chats, develop an engaging blog post using any information provided. This was the third one. Okay. And it has with the following carryover. Now it also added, I want to include a figure or, or table of data in the blog post. So it automatically carries over the responses from the previous chats. In addition to anything you have in that carryover property, as we can see here, right? So the carryover was this but it also added the responses from the previous two LLM calls. Now, what I'll say about this is I have mixed feelings about this, to be honest with you, because if you're using open AI API, you're going to use more money doing it this way. The more agents you have, the more calls you want to make, you know, each, uh, each chat, even though it looks like it might be bundled into one, it's really not, you're still making separate calls. Okay. Now, what I think this is great though, this is great for local open source uh, LLMs. Like if you're using like something like LM Studio or Olama or something like that, this is great because it, it seems like you can make it more structured the way you talk to the agents. And you can talk to specific agents with specific messages and you can also give more context for the next agent. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna go over this briefly is because I think this takes its own video. Like this is a lot, right? This is definitely should be its own video to go over, but it's a, it's called a graph modeling language using select speaker. Okay, and right now there's only a couple ways to uh, have different select speaker methods, including like something like round, round robin. But I'm just gonna go over kind of like the images here to give you a breakdown. Uh, right now, like say we have five agents here, zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, in this graph, Every agent can talk to anybody, right? And whenever you normally run it, you don't always get the same results. Like you don't, they're just in the group chat and they're not always going to talk to each other in a specific order. Sometimes you can get, if you use different seeds, you can get different orders. It seems kind of random, right? I think that's the auto, the auto selection is by default. Um, but, and you know, that could be good. It's not saying it's a bad thing, but there are some other possibilities here. What if we wanted 
everybody only talked to one agent, right? So agent zero, maybe this is me, the user. Then we have four other agents here. And what if we only want them to just speak back to me and then I give something back to them, right? We don't want them speaking with each other. Well, that's possible with this. Okay, and then also here we have a example of, we have like team captains, right? So AO is like uh, captain, the captain for team A, B0 is the captain for team B, and C0 is the captain for team C. Well, what if we had different teams perform different functions specifically? And like all of A team, um, maybe they were just generating ideas. So they could all talk to each other and then give that back to the captain. And then the captain would send that over to the next team and maybe they were they actually did the writing right so then all of the agents within the b team they could talk to each other right and they could confer with each other and make it better they can make up a summary or blog post or whatever it is then they send that to the captain now the captain sends that to the last team team c and maybe they're um i don't know maybe they're getting ready to publish it right so they're like they're the publishers well everybody within team c can talk to each other here and then send that back once they're done, back to the captain, and then, then we can do something with it, right? So this is another way that we can organize the chat ourselves with a graph. Like I said, this is more this is more advanced and requires its own video, but I just wanted to show you this uh, just so that you can understand it exists and you can look at it if you want to. Okay, thanks for watching. That was another Autogen update. There will probably be another one next week, and I'll cover that one too. It seems like with Autogen Studio UI, they're constantly every week uh, getting updates and adding them from like whenever you uh, install it through Python, getting all the functionality there and porting it to the UI, which is nice, especially for somebody, you know, some people don't really want to code or maybe aren't worried about it, don't know it yet, and they just kind of want to get their feet wet. Well, this is great. Audio Studio UI is a great way to just kind of get started. And all you have to worry about is your API key, and that's it. Check out my GitHub page. I put new code up every week, especially what I'm doing here. It's all free to use. And I also have a newsletter that I send out every Sunday at noon. Sign up if you want. You're not forced to, but if you would like to, it, it kind of give you insight on what I'm doing, any troubles that I had, what I plan on in the future, and so forth. If you have any comments, please leave them down in the section below and like and subscribe, and I will see you next video.